Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Oro here. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. If you're old, thanks for sticking with your girl. Um, today, I figured, you know, I have been recovering from having coronavirus symptoms. Um, my doctor did say that I could possibly have it. I was put on a list to get tested, but unfortunately, I have been unable to get an appointment. So, I've been on quarantine since then, and eventually I'll be going back to work. But that's just kind of like an update on my life. I will make a completely separate video talking about coronavirus and my experience being a nurse working with coronavirus patients in New York City and um, my own personal experience with um, possibly having it, which we, were, according to my doctor, they're pretty sure that I did. Um, yeah, but yeah, so anyway, this video is not about that. This video is about how to become a rapper um, when I just first decided, or how to make music. When I first decided to make music, I um, didn't have a lot of, I'm a research type of person and I love Google and YouTube. And unfortunately I didn't have a lot of resource material, resources um, available to me when I first started music. Uh, I was lucky and fortunate enough to be introduced to a friend who makes music and um, who introduced me to more friends that make music that kind of helped me all along my way. But I feel like um, women need to rule the world. And I feel like this video is very important to be made so that people who do want to make music are able to do so without like running into so many roadblocks like I did when I started to try to make music all from when I was 11. So, so basically, the first thing is if you feel like you want to sing or if you want to rap um the first thing you want to do for sure is just work on writing music to beats and the way that you find beats there's like different platforms that you can find beats on you can find beats on youtube you can find beats on soundcloud and you can find beats on a beat an app called beatstars or beatstars.com and so youtube and soundcloud you can you typically search like if you feel like your sound is similar to like a dirty south kind of sound or a west coast kind of sound you can kind of use keywords like oh i don't know like odb type beat or a drake type beat if you're like into like melodic tones or you know like soulful type soulful type beats and those are the kind of keywords that you would use in pretty much all three of those platforms um but i will say that primarily for me the platform that i used was beat stars because it's just very simple and just straight to the point. Beatstars is an app where you can, where producers and artists kind of meet in the middle, where producers are able to, in a sense, release the different beats or their catalog on this app and the beats are available to purchase on different platforms. So you can have an MP3 for purchase, uh, a wave file for purchase, track outs, which is the MP3 wave, wave file and the track outs, which is like the stems in a sense, or like a exclusive rights to that beat. So all of those different ways, all of those different ways that you can own a beat are available for purchase on BeatStars. Uh, the great thing about BeatStars also is that you can download uh, the free MP3 for you to be able to record on and kind of figure out, okay, is this something, record and write on, uh, is this something that I would want to potentially invest in and make a actual song out of? So. Yeah, so like I said, you want to start with writing and um, practicing and kind of recording yourself on um, like voice notes on your phone, for example. That's something, that's one of the first tips that I received from my uh, friend who's also a music producer. His name is Olu. He's like probably, like he's just an amazing person. He's, um, and he kind of taught me that. And my friend Alpha, who's also a rapper, I'll put all the information down below. Um, it's just kind of like practicing writing and practicing writing with by yourself for sure because writing for me is very vulnerable and I do my best writing when I'm alone and then when I get around other people then I can kind of get their feedback on it. So recording those voice notes, sending it to friends and kind of getting their feedback on what they think or at the end of the day you're the artist so you're the one that makes the final decision but that is what I would first do is kind of explore that realm of writing, explore that realm of hearing yourself overbeat and getting used to getting critique before you actually invest fully. So the second thing that I would say is um, once you kind of get a hang of writing, once you've written a couple songs, you know, 
um, and that you're really confident in, I think it before you invest yourself further, you kind of want to discover yourself, like what kind of artist do you want to be? What kind of sound do you want to kind of go for? That kind of goes hand in hand throughout the entire process. But I will say that um, it's something that you need to start thinking about early on. So that way it doesn't get lost in the sauce as you, you don't get, the image that you want to portray doesn't get lost um, when you're, as you go along. So you want to kind of get that idea of who you want to be in the beginning so that way no one can really dictate who they think that you should be marketed as because you've already made a decision on what kind of artist you want to be on the in the early run. So that's really good. Then um, once you kind of get to that point where, okay, you've been writing songs, you've been listening to beats, you've been getting feedback, you've tweaked a little things here and there, you've been working on your breath control and all that stuff, um, then you can take that leap of faith and say, hey, you know what, I want to book a studio session. For me, personally, um, I was able to learn about a studio through another friend who is a rapper, Alpha and Olu, because this is the studio that they had been using with the engineer, um, Mato, who's like amazing also. Um, that's the studio that they had been using, so I was that was pretty much the only option that I had. But if you're someone who doesn't have connections in your city, or if you don't really, if you're not really aware of people who rap, or if this is something that you're doing kind of like out on a limb, what I will say is that you should take your time to kind of do research on social media, kind of do research on SoundCloud or whatever, reach out to people um, who you might've heard their music that are in your city and kind of figure out find out how, like what studios they use, what engineers they use and et cetera, um, and kind of do your research through that way. A lot of studios, um, in order to promote themselves, they do use hashtags like New York City Studio or like Bronx Studio or whatever the case may be. But before you go to the, those studios, you wanna kind of get an idea of who has recorded there and what does their music sound like and who was the engineer of those projects. So luckily for me, um, I was fortunate enough to where I had been able to kind of get an idea of like the studio based off of my, like I was giving a testimonial by two people. So I already knew that I was in good hands, if that makes sense. And it wasn't until recently when I started comparing my music to like other artists that I realized that, um, I mean, I always knew my engineer was like freaking amazing, but I, it wasn't until recently where I really realized that I was fortunate to get that opportunity off the rip like I didn't have to shop around for amazing engineers because I already had I looked up on my first try so I can't go too much into detail about researching studios because I really didn't do that but I will say that it's important to hear uh the other songs recorded in that studio so that you can kind of get a feel for like the mic quality and the engineer qualities again I'm not too versed in that department but those are things that you want to consider um so once you get in the studio i will say during the writing process for me i was very discouraged because i hated the sound of my voice and i hated the way that i sounded over beats i felt like i was very long-winded even though i knew that these verses were like great i just felt like i would give up on a lot of songs because of how they sounded when i voice noted it the great thing about the studio is like the studio is like photoshop for vocals uh, it's, just, it's like Photoshop for music, basically. So it's kind of like when you take a when you take a decent picture, but you're like, uh, a couple things could be tweaked, or like you're like, oh, this picture is like too, super bad because it has terrible lighting. But then you go on Photoshop and you like turning up the brightness, turn up the contrast. Like you're not necessarily like messing with what's there, but you're kind of just manipulating things that you probably wouldn't have been able to do with nature. That's kind of like what the studio does or a good engineer does is kind of like just manipulating your voice and like um, allowing you to make those adjustments to have a really, really good picture. Not that the picture or not that the picture of the lyrics or whatever the case may be was bad before, but it's uh, like I said, Photoshop for music, Photoshop for music. So when you get in the studio or like if, if you if you practice the song and you feel like you're, you're really not confident on that song, just Take a minute, wait till you get to the studio to practice that song over like an MP3, get like a pre-mix or whatever, play that a couple times and then, yeah, and then you'll kind of see the difference. Um, for me, 
once I get to the studio and I've recorded a song over an mp3 if I feel like that song is heat if I feel like that's the that's something that I want to um, continue with then I move on to the next step which is buying uh, the beat so the engineer that I work with he always recommends um, the engineer and the producer that I work with they always recommend me buying the track outs which is like I guess they call it the stems or whatever. Um, it's like the meat and bone. It's like the recipe of the beat. It's like the raw version of the beat. It's like, it's kind of like when, if any of you guys work on Photoshop where if someone were to give you an image and that image is one layer, that is like an MP3 file versus if somebody were to give you a PSD file and that has multiple, multiple, multiple layers that you can now manipulate, that's kind of like how the track outs are. Um, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, I guess it would be the same thing as saying, oh, somebody made you mac and cheese, like the best mac and cheese in the world, and they just kind of like give you this mac and cheese in a pan like it's already made, and there's not much you could do to it other than like maybe eat it or like add a topping or a side to it versus someone giving you every single ingredient to that mac and cheese you know just ready to put together and then you can add your own flair to it that's what the track outs are it's like the meat and bones to a beat um and then you can kind of manipulate the way you want to so my producer my engineers my engineer mata um they always kind of recommend doing that because because it, he, my engineer Mata is able to manipulate the beat um, to, based on the infliction of my voice or whatever I decide to do creatively with my voice, um, he's able to make it kind of marry all of the ingredients together. Instead of it seeming like my voice or my recording is just a topping to a beat, he merges it all together and makes it sound good so that you're able to play these songs like on a radio or like in your car or in your headphones and the quality of the music doesn't really go anywhere and like you can hear my voice it's not like my my voice is overpowering the beat or the beat is overpowering my voice and vice versa so that's what i would recommend if you are unable to so financing beats because when you buy the track outs they can cost you anything from a hundred to two hundred dollars per beat and um, if you're making a project, you can only imagine how much built that adds up, you know? So what I will say with financing, um, if this is a hobby for you, I will say just start with the MP3s and kind of like record a lot of premixes and see how you kind of sound and like decide which kind of songs that you like, decide the songs that you want to invest in. But if you feel like, okay, this is what I want, like just kind of save money or put money aside or prepare yourself to pay about a hundred to two hundred dollars for a track out. Um, on top of what you're already paying for the studio session so just kind of prepare yourself mentally um if you want to take music seriously and if you want to put out music that you are going to have to spend the money in order to produce quality yes there are people there who record songs in their bedroom and are able to mix and master through an app and all of that good stuff but if you want to invest in quality like again if you want to invest in quality you you just have to prepare yourself to pay that price you know and that's what I did. So once you pay for all the track outs and everything, you go, you record the song, um, or in my case, I, my, I just give the engineer the track outs and with, and with the vocals that I already recorded and he kind of mixes and masters it and he does, what his, he does his thing, does his magic. And then the song is done. So now I have my song done or whatever. And so the next thing that you want to kind of think of is distribution. Now that you've made your song, you've, the engineer has made it, he sent you the song, you want to now prepare yourself to put it on for like distribution so that it can get on Amazon Music, so that it can get on um, Spotify, Apple, TikTok, Triller, all of these different platforms. All you have to do is sign up for either DistroKid or TuneCore. Me personally, I have tried both of them. TuneCore, you have to pay per song and it really doesn't like you're not able to use cool features like allowing your lyrics to show on Instagram and they just don't offer you as much but with DistroKid you pay one flat price for the entire year and you're able to release as much music as you want and those songs are like distributed to like 
a kajillion and one unknown streaming services the music the money comes directly to you they automatically kind of set up your taxes for you and if you are paying taxes um if you make enough to pay to have to pay taxes on your music and um they're just it's just an easier to navigate platform so i signed up for DistroKid and i re-released my music on there and i think DistroKid is like 30 dollars or or however much it costs um to for that year and then you can literally just release music that entire time for me i am versed in graphic design so i make all of my own album covers but if you're someone who's not necessarily very good with photoshop or if you're not very good with um yeah if you're not very good with photoshop or adobe illustrator or any adobe systems what you can use is canva the same way people use canva for like ra flyers or like a invitation to a baby shower you can use canva to make your own um album cover if you guys are interested in me doing a video about making album covers let me know because i actually enjoy doing it and i probably will help you like making album covers on canva um but yeah so you want to make your album cover or you can pay someone to make your album cover if you are looking for someone to make an album cover uh i do have a graphic design business called let's get graphic with two c's at the end so I'll leave that information down below if you're interested in that. But um, yeah, I make all of my own album covers and they're very, very simple to make if you have a concept and if you're kind of going with the theme that you came up with in the beginning. Lastly, once your song is like ready and you're ready to distribute it, I will say make sure that your release date is at least, at the very least, a week before you upload your song to DistroKid. Because if you do what I have done in the past where I'm like, oh, I just got my song from that engineer, I'm going to release it tomorrow. It takes a while for other streaming platforms to kind of catch up. And then you get to a point where like your fans or people who are interested in supporting you are like, oh, well, I have Spotify and it's not on Spotify. And then you're like, dang, like, and by the time it's on Spotify, they've already lost interest. So you want to make sure that you upload it at the very least a week before, um, just so that it gives the streaming services enough time to review your song, review your lyrics, review everything, and um, have the song end up being on all the platforms that they need to be on when you premiere the song, whenever you decide to premiere the song. So there's that. Um, now that you have your song uploaded on DistroKid and there's a specific amount of time that you want to promote your music, I guess, um, one thing that I will say is apps that I've used to promote my music are TikTok, Triller, um, Twitter. Those are like the three top top three places uh, to promote music um, because they all provide visuals. I think visuals are what is going to promote your music. If you cannot afford a music video, just keep making trailers, keep making challenges, keep making TikToks. Eventually, they'll pick up. Eventually, someone's going to want to do it. Eventually, someone's going to hear your song. Um, Put it in the background of everything that you do like for me if i'm like driving in the car i have my songs on if i'm going to the grocery store and recording myself i have my songs on even on my youtube channel in my last video you guys heard that i used my music throughout the video um and in promotion of events i have my songs on and everything of that nature so that's kind of like a way that but that's something visual that people can remember like oh when I was watching this I heard this in the background and this is now I'm going to go find that out you know what I'm saying find out about it so um, that's kind of a way that you can promote your music it's just like creating like even a snippet for example if you want to use your album cover you can use your iMovie app on your phone where you can use your album cover and you just add the audio to the album cover and create like a quick 30 second snippet to put on your story and things of that nature but like i said twitter is a huge 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 platform for musicians because quite frankly all of like i wouldn't say i wouldn't attribute all of it but twitter is just a really fast and easy platform for you to promote yourself because people, you don't feel guilty for how many times you tweet a day like i can tweet 500 times a day and not feel guilty but i can de most definitely most definitely i'm not tweeting like 500 instagramming 500 times a day that's just not happening so um, that's why I would say Twitter is a great thing. Tr TikTok and Triller, obviously, because of the idea of creating a visual to the song. So dances, whatever the case may be, to the song. So that's why those are a great way to promote. So this, these are promotions before your music comes out. 
um, that's kind of things that you want to do during quarantine another thing that I kind of discovered recently is the use of um, the use of Instagram lives so there's like a lot of celebrities that go on Instagram lives having talent shoes a lot of a and is going Instagram live having uh, talent shows your friends going on like just random people going on IG live just like fooling around something that I did that has actually increased my following by about 200 followers recently is um I just started just hopping on like a whole bunch of random lives like I would hop on this person's live I would hop on that person's live whomever I was on um dramatized live which is take Heat's record le record label and he was there with a couple of his, I think like a manager or an a &R was on there or something. Um, I don't remember, but I hopped on that live and was able to play some of my music for them. And like that got me a lot of followers. That got me a couple producers hit me up and wanted to work with me. Um, I then joined um, Nigel Fam. Shout out to Nigel Fam. I joined their live during their Darty. I think that was also featured on their YouTube channel. And in that in that live alone like i got a lot of people looking uh for my music and a lot of djs hit me up um wanting to get like my songs so that they could promote them and stuff like that so that was really great and then i also got on justin's ig live shout out to justin uh he is actually the one that i got the most following out of um i got on his instagram live and kind of performed my music as well some of my unreleased music and was able to get a lot of traction from that. So Instagram live talent shows, in as much as you might not, like, I kind of did start doing them on the premise of like, oh, like, what if this ANR notices me? Or like, what if Tiki notices me and signs me and stuff? That was kind of the premise that I was on initially, but then um, that really doesn't get you anywhere, but like, it discourages you when they only ask you for your Instagram in the end. Um, so once you kind of like take away from that purpose of it, and to go back to the purpose of just like exposure and getting people to know about you then you're you will end up being successful in growing your followers so that was a way that i was able to promote my music and now with my new ep outside coming out soon there's a lot of people who are anticipating it there's a lot of producers there's a lot of djs there's a lot of just even regular listeners that have been giving me shout outs and different things like that because they discovered me on these lives so um, as far as after your project goes live, once you post it, once your project is live on uh, streaming services and things of that nature, in order to kind of keep you motivated, just keep writing music. Always throughout this process, you should still continue to write music. Don't feel bad if you aren't writing music because, like for example, when I first started making music, uh, a lot of people would say, well, you need to put your 10 hours in or whatever the case may be. And I used to feel guilty that I wasn't consistently writing consistently working on the next project but it is okay to have writer's block it is okay to feel like you know what i wrote the song but i really want to take a break because at the end of the day you're the artist you're not part of a label you're just working on your craft and um so you're not in anyone's time schedule and even if you were to join a label and in as much as you work for them they also work for you so i will say just continue to work on your craft but also don't feel guilty if you're not doing it 500 hours a week you know so um but once your songs go live while you're also working on your next project or or whatever is coming up next for you make sure that you're continuously promoting it and don't be ashamed of your work like something that i had to kind of like get out of was okay i've released the song and because it didn't get as much traction as it did when it first got released like I would start becoming very self-conscious and feel like, oh, well, maybe this isn't something that I want to invest in or whatever the case may be. But honestly, you just have to keep going, like keep making music, keep making music that makes you feel good. Keep promoting the music that you've released, because in as much as you think that the song might be old, there's been multiple instances. Like, for example, um, I don't remember who made the song Don't Rush, like the Don't Rush challenge that is popping right now. I saw a tweet that this song was made a year ago, like it was released a year ago. And now it's getting the traction that it's getting. Ella Mae, for example, is a perfect example. Boot Up was not... When she first made Boot Up, it was like a three-year-old song or a two-year-old song before it started popping. So there's always going to be... It's always going to be somebody who's going to discover that song years later. That's the great thing about music is that music is ever-changing. And it's, you know, like... And especially when you're ahead of your time, um, 
people someone is always going to be interested in hearing you and as much as you might think your music is trash or whatever we have heard we have seen some really just questionable artists blow up and it's because there's a group of people who want to listen to them right so that's what i would uh the advice i would give if you're a woman go ahead and adjust myself i know i should have probably started off with this but if you are a woman and you want to start making music make sure i know i said this in the beginning but make sure you know who you want to be and who and how you want to portray yourself and how you want to market yourself you do not have to fall into the categories that they try to pitch you in i've noticed that if you are not super hypersexualized or super tomboy they kind of don't know what to do with you a lot of people are kind of like nah where do i put her if you're not super weird like where do i put her like there's regular girls just like me and you and anybody else and if, if you are a hypersexual person fine own it if you are a tomboy perfect or if you're someone like me who kind of is in the middle and really just is regular like own that too and recognize that that's what you want to do and stay true to that portion of you for me i make lots of different music i make afro swing music i make trap music or trap sounding because it's not necessarily related to drugs or anything like that. Um, I make, I sing sometimes. Well, mm, sing ish, hold a note, yeah. Like you know, there, there's there's different things. I make songs about heartbreak. I make songs about self empowerment. There's so many different things that I do, and I don't put myself in the box. But that's because I decided in the beginning of making my music career that I didn't want to fit in a box. And um, you have to make that decision earlier on so that it can be consistent. Another thing that I would say about being a woman and making music, being a dark skinned woman and making music, don't allow those feelings, those feelings of insecurity that came from childhood resurface. Because it's very easy for that to happen when you're a woman, when you're a darker skinned woman in this industry. I know I look light skinned right now, but I'm really, <laughs> it's just the lighting. But um, when you're a darker skinned woman, it's very easy for those feelings that you felt in elementary school to reappear because that colorism exists that high school you know because the, of the praising of the imagery of like non-black or racially ambiguous women or even if they are black that lighter skin the less you know less textured hair and all of that hypersexualized or not hypersexualized whatever the case may be that exists the thought of oh because she's dark skin and she's angry that means she's angry that exists so all the things that you think that we might have progressed from um because of twitter said so or because instagram said so isn't necessarily the case it in when it comes to business really um those prejudices or those stereotypes really do exist so as a dark skinned woman if you're making music don't let that ugly feeling that you felt inside when you were much younger resurfaced just kind of remind yourself constantly even if you're seeing like lighter skinned or you know um if, even if you're noticing let me not put it on lighter skinned women because i don't think that's fair but if you're noticing that those feelings are coming back or if you're starting to notice that those are the kind of people that they're more attracted to or like just remind yourself that that is not true you know remind yourself of who you are remind yourself that you're beautiful remind yourself that your talent should always speak for itself in the end like in as much as
Sorry, my my camera flicked on me. But in as much as that might not be the case in this industry, just keep keep that in mind. Um, don't ever forget that who you are. Just always remember that you're beautiful. Um, and if you ever see yourself like being jealous of, uh, just to be honest, like if you ever catch yourself feeling like feelings of contentment or resentment to a lighter skinned girl who you might not feel is as talented as you, even though talent is relative, um, just keep reminding yourself that you're worth it and that eventually there are people in this world that are going to appreciate you and appreciate what you look like and appreciate who you, like what you stand for. Um, but yeah, and that's just, honestly, that's just women in general because it's already hard for us, you know, just like don't, don't ever feel that way. Um, but before I go into that rant, I do want to move on. Another thing as a woman is don't let these people take advantage of you because coming in as a woman in the, in music, I've had multiple situations where people kind of, you can tell the difference about how people treat male artists versus how they treat females. Um, they just expect women to be timid and just quiet and just like take everything for it is or like easily impressionable or like what they say goes kind of situation because you're a woman and you don't know much or whatever. I think that you should stand your ground and, and at the end of the day, you are the artist. Um, what you say goes. Nobody can dictate what you have to do. Nobody should tell you that, oh, you need to have less clothes to do this or you need to have this kind of body to do that. You dictate who you want to be. And it sucks because a lot of us feel like we have to sell ourselves in a sense to become uh, popular or to become successful. But like I said, there's always going to be someone who listens. Like for me, um, in, the, in as much as I haven't been making music that long, I've kind of already recognized that this is something that is very, 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 very extremely prevalent in the States. So because I make more worldly music, I already know who I need to market to. If you don't feel like I'm marketable, if you don't feel like you want to listen to me, then I'm going to market to people who do want to listen to me. I'm going to market to people who, who appreciate my music. You don't have to chase the bag in a sense of like these major record labels. You can do the same way politicians, like grassroots, um, you could do that. You can grow your following from literally just talking to people who are willing to listen. Um, and that's way more fulfilling than chasing people who will never appreciate you or what you do or what you stand for and people who are consistently trying to change you. But yeah, that's all that I have to say. Um, again, you guys know me as Oro, but my name, my alias rather is 6VI in Roman numerals. Um, I have an EP already out called Sincerely 6. It's like a love whirlwind three track EP that I really hope that you guys uh, would check out actually because it's actually an amazing EP. It's one of my first EPs and my babies and I love it. And I have a new EP coming out called um, Outside. So uh, and that, that EP is mind blowing, okay? Sensational, okay? It's amazing. So I'm really, really excited for you guys to hear that. If you are an artist and have any questions, again, I am not an expert. Obviously, I am not. I'm not going to sit on here on YouTube and act like I've got like a kajillion million streams. And no, I don't. I'm just a girl who likes to make music. And if you are somebody who's interested in knowing how to do it, or if you have any further questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, anywhere, even here in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. And yeah. Bye. <laughs>